the pursuit and capture of Nazi Commandant Rudolf Hoss, who set up and ran Auschwitz, was the work of Jewish-British Lieutenant Hans Alexander. Hoss's March 1946 capture was a critical event in the post-war roundup of Nazi leaders because his testimony at the Nuremberg trials revealed the approach to carrying out the Holocaust from the view of one who ran its most notorious death camp. Now Alexander's great-nephew, Thomas Harding, has published a book about Alexander's exploits, Hans and Rudolf, the true story of the German Jew who tracked down and caught the commandant of Auschwitz. Hans Alexander was my great uncle. He was my grandmother's brother. And I only found out that he was a Nazi war crime investigator at his eulogy. I never knew about it. It was amazing. The family didn't talk about it. And at the end of the Second World War, he was in Belsen, and he was part of the war crimes investigation team. And he ended up uh, pursuing the people who ran the concentration camps, including Rudolf Huss, who was hiding in a barn uh, in the area near the Danish border in northern Germany. Huss was the commandant of Auschwitz, the camp that would become synonymous with the worst atrocities of the Holocaust. In 1943, he was assigned to run all of the Nazi regime's concentration camps and was in northern Germany in the final days of the war when the Allied powers were closing in on victory. And then this big meeting and Himmler said, OK, folks, the jig's up, just go and hide. And so Rudolf Hoss ended up taking the identity of a man called Franz Lang, who was a sailor, and um, ended up being a farm laborer for many, many months. Uh, and he lived in a barn and he thought he'd got away with it and he and his family would have flee to South America, like so many of the Nazi leaders. Those plans were interrupted when Hans Alexander caught up with Hoss, who was given up by his wife, Hedvig. She was under British Army surveillance, but turning in her husband took some convincing. And my great uncle turns up, Hans Alexander, and says, let's interview and interrogate the, the wife. And um, she, they take the wife and the son, the eldest son, and they put them in jail. And he comes up with a ruse. They get this big steam engine and they back it up to the jail. And uh, uh, my uncle says to Hedvig, the wife, he says, if you don't tell us where your husband is, we're going to send your son to Siberia. Um, and he says, you know, you've got 10 minutes, here's a piece of pen paper, here's a pencil, write down the location of your husband. And she did. She said, it's Franz Lang, he's in the barn, he's living um, in this little village called Gotrupel nearby. Alexander and some fellow troops followed the information to a nearby village, and the expectation of confronting the commandant of Auschwitz meant emotions ran high. They took with them a, a box of axe handles. They were definitely intent on doing some harm. Um, it, Hans was not the only Jewish soldier. There was other Jews, partly from England, but also refugees from Austria, from Germany. People had lost their family members in the camps. So they were obviously angry and they wanted revenge. And soon enough, Alexander would come face to face with the object of that revenge on a dark, snowy night in the German village of Gotrupel. And my great uncle knocks on the door and the guy who opens the door is obviously Rudolf Hoss. And my uncle has a photograph and he says, you're Rudolf Hoss, you're the commandant. And the guy goes, no, I'm, I'm not. I have nothing to do with it. My name's Franz Lang. You've got it wrong. And he shows him the papers. And my great uncle says, OK, let's have a look at your SS tattoo to see if you've got your um, blood type. And actually, he'd taken it off. So he says, hmm, how am I going to work this out? And then he sees he has his wedding ring. And because my great uncle's from Germany, he's a Jew from Germany, he knew that often in German, Germany, the, uh, the husbands would have a wedding ring with the initials of the husband and the wife. So he says, give me your wedding ring. And the commandant says, no, I'm not going to do that. And my uncle said, that's fine. Um, and he says to one of his friends, his colleagues, he says, go and get a knife from the kitchen. And so he's going to cut his finger off to be able to get the wedding ring. And of course, at that stage, the commentator says, OK. So he hands the ring over, and of course, the initials are inside. And that's how my great uncle established that it was the commandant of Auschwitz. Hoss's capture provided a critical witness for the prosecution at the Nuremberg trials. And his testimony changed the course of the trial, because for the first time, somebody said, this is what happened. This is exactly how we ran the camps, the gas chambers, the selections, the crematoria. And the, the enormity of the detail um, uh, persuaded the other leaders, including Frank, who was the governor of Poland, and others to actually say, OK, this is what happened. And he changed the course and became incredibly important from an evidentiary point of view for the Holocaust. To read more about the exploits of Hans Alexander and his small group of Nazi hunters, pick up a copy of Hans and Rudolf, out now from Simon & Schuster. Reporting for The Jewish Channel, I'm Christian Neiden.